Hurt it in Antalya in the European Champs, but we'll see this time. Brilliant commentary though, Rich. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah, and we will see you back shortly because this is the gold medal match of the women's sabre competition. And if you thought that was exciting, <laughs> this one I think is going to be a humdinger. Fasten your seatbelts. Indeed. World number one, Anna Bashta from Azerbaijan. And world number three, Imura Misaki. Those rankings are wrong on the screen. It's world number one against world number three. Bashta has had such a cracking season. Won the European Championships just a few weeks ago, and she is looking mean and in form. She had a tough semi-final, but uh, a lot of people were backing Imura Masaki ahead of this one. I, I, I just got a gut feeling that Bashta's season has got to finish with a world title. Time now for the gold medal match here in Cairo. The World Championships 2022. It's women's sabre. It's fast, it's furious. And a Bashta on the left of your screen. Imura Misaki from Japan on the right. Oh, nice. Now you've seen the attempt straight away. So Bashta started that attack for the first hit. I've been very patient coming forward. She knows that Amira has got cracking defence. Amira is showing on the second hit, but she's also got a good attack. Beautiful second intention, para riposte. Short attack from Bashta, deliberately missing, giving Amira the right of way to create the opportunity for the para riposte. Distance trap didn't work for Bashta this time, but look how busy she is in defence. But long attack from Imura landing. You've got no time to explain any of the hits. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, no just, it's so fast. It's just incredible. Well, I can tell you that they've met five times in international competition um, since uh, 2015, and Bashta has won four of them, including the last time they met, which is May this year in Padua, and it was a 15-9 win to Bashta. They went on to win the, the Grand Prix, and uh, now Bashta calls for a video review, Vassil Malensha from Bulgaria, uh, the referee, and it's a Luigi Martellotti on the video. Final decision goes to, to Malensha. If we see it here, oh, now there's an argument here. He's sticking for the same decision, though, gives it to uh, Imura Misaki. We actually met in 2015 in a junior competition, World Cup Juniors in Plovdiv. Bastard won that one. Plovdiv, Bulgaria, where the referee's from. And uh, they, they're going for a couple of World Cups uh, in, in the coming season. Another review here. So that's a miss. Right of ways with Imura. I don't think she gives it up. Ah, he does give it. He does give it. So Reprise. She, yeah, so she, well, Imura had the right of way, but she then stepped back backwards and that is not an intent to attack so he's given it to Bashta so three apiece the score defense that defense from Imura is spectacular great power post they call Slaggy the king of the Paraira Post. I think Imura is on the way to becoming the queen of the Paraira Post. Made miss again, but didn't land. Bashed out. Oh, with a sky hook over the top onto the wrist. She's so busy in defence. You watch her. You, you've got to. If you're passive in defence, you're just running backwards away from your opponent. They can see exactly what you're doing and where to land the attack. But she, Bashta, is very, very active in her defence, and that's what created that hit. 
Yeah, you need to be close enough when you're going backwards so that your opponent doesn't know, doesn't know, is always like worried about the, the counter. Yep. Nothing more to add to that, Graham. It's exactly right. You've got to stay close enough that, they, that you, you're trying to lure them into finishing. So you can do parry or pass. If they don't finish, throw out the counter. It's like a dance. You've got to match your speed to theirs, to your opponents. Vassil, Valencia for the referee. Going to have a look at this one. You can see the concern on uh, the Japanese coach's face. Uh, you can't really see it from that overhead. It's a beautiful shot. So it's first attack from the right, no. Nothing comes from Bashta, so Imura gets the remains of the attack. He can't start early. Ah, uh, he's actually stopped that to make sure the points are added. Good call, Vassal. Bashta looking a little confused mm. now. It's that stop that you see. If you don't see the feet, it's difficult to call it, but she actually stops her attack. Mirror on the long attack. Bashta again active in defence. Two meetings of the blade. So there you go. Attack with Priester first. So Imura beats the blade, but then Bashta hits with a parry riposte. That's why you heard the two yeah. beatings so beat of the blade. So beat attack, parry riposte. Exactly. Clack, clack, hit. Yes. Step, step, step. The arm's not moving forwards. There's no intent from Imura. So Bashta gets the right of way. And uh, in fact, he has, he has actually no. given that right, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, no, he gave it right. Yeah, he gave Preparation it right. Preparation Bashta. So. Yeah, so she, she didn't actually move her arm forward. Oh. Simple there from Imura. Picked up the right of way. And we go to the break. 8-7, you couldn't get any closer. No, and Bash just sort of looked at the beginning like she was absolutely in control of the match. But Imura's confidence in defence is what's making the difference. And it means that then Bashta gets a little bit nervous about mm. attacking, so Imura can then build on her attack. And uh, uh, that, that, the last hit, that, uh, not, the, not the last hit, the one before, where I thought it was preparation Bashta. In fact, the little tippy-tappy of the feet from Im Imura, Vasil Malenchev called that as the start of the attack. So she didn't. She obviously didn't lose any momentum when yeah. she was, you know, tapping her feet going forward. A good start from her. Really good start from her, but Bashta. Mm. I'm still leaning towards her. Vadim Shtabab in there. Looking on. It's Jerome Tuss, the uh, Frenchman at the other end. Uh, the, he's uh, coaching the Japanese. Yeah, well, we Japanese. both said Bashta going into this. Um, are we sticking with that? I, I am, but I have to say... You've got to go into the break with the lead against Bashta this season. Yeah. And Imura has done that first task, but only by one point. Yeah. And, um, well, Vadim Shtababin is an absolutely phenomenal coach and uh, would have given her some pretty strong advice. I think he's told her you've got to be confident on the attack. I don't think she's going to come out all guns blazing yeah. on the attack, but I think that when she goes for it, she really will go for it. So here we go. Force first point after the break, so crucial. Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's why she can't, because the defence is so strong. The ch yeah. two changes of line there from Imura to block that one out. Watch this. One, and then blocks it out. She shows the flank. She shows her shoulder, sword on her shoulder. Yeah. And acknowledged by Bastia as well. Well... Wow. Yeah, this is, a, this is a big run. And you know what I said at the beginning of the day? I'm not quite sure why everyone's saying Imura, Imura, Imura. But look at her, 10-7 mm. up in the final. Well, that time Imura fell short, but still has the right of way here. 
Bashda has ne needs to uh, stop the rot now. She needs to come off the line with full intention. She needs to take this one. She needs to forget about the defense of Imura. I think she probably needs one more change of line on the attack, but she has to attack. She cannot yeah. go backwards now. She can't go backwards. This is why. Yeah, this stop is exactly that. Why. But it's built off defense. It's yeah. built off the defense. The Japanese fencer is so strong in defense, it means Bash is nervous about attacking. Great fight from uh, Imura Masaki. Six and two threes for me, and the referee is going to have a look at the video on this one. Yeah, Vasil Malenchev will go and chat with uh, the video referee. Is that Marcellotti? Marcellotti, Luigi Marcellotti. Called the final of the men's sabre. Here we go with the replay. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's left for me, if anything, but he's, has he called nothing here? No. He's called nothing. Make miss again from Bashta, but Parry repost. Yeah. Parry repost every day of the week. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why Bashta's called for a video review on this one because. Might have burnt that one. I, I, I take my hat off. I have to eat it as well, I think. Not a single he, point scored by Bashta since the break. Yeah, uh, it's a, a phenomenal performance from Imura. All day today. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Well, Vassal Malenchev does the little rolling of the hands, the little Egyptian dance that I saw them doing last night. There's a band playing in a hotel and they was doing that rolling. Thanks for clarifying that, yeah, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not gonna call those. But it was a, it was a good call from Bashta. Um, now another video review. Yeah, I'm not sure why that was called because it the pretty simple, simultaneous action. Second time, so the card's coming out now. Who's it going to? It's going to Bashta mm. for early start. That adds even more pressure. Well, another card, and it would be oh, nice. Still in touch. It's only three points. Yep. We know that can turn around quickly in Sabre. Oh, going backwards now, though. Tap right. Yeah. And the body language from Anna Bashta is not good. Day of the week. Imura yeah. is on the verge of making history here. Japan's first ever world champion in Anga. women's sabre and her first Red. ever major championship win. Red. Anga. 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 Little error there, though, in the tactics. She had the line out, she should have kept it there, yeah. but she changed it from line to attack, and Bashta was ready. It's only a matter of time, though, you think now, before Mura is crowned the world champion. Oh. Bashta going into double points. Oh, brilliant! There it is. Mura Masaki is the world champion. And Japan have done it in women's sabre. And Imura Misaki has defeated the world number one, Anna Bashta, in a thrilling the final. So, Karen, thoughts on that? Well, pick everyone the, else was right. Pick the bones out of that one. Everyone else was right. It was all built on the defence, though, of. Uh, 
Imura. She's been brilliant all day. She has been absolutely fantastic. But what she did in defence made Bashta stop attacking. And Bashta lost the confidence in her attack. And as soon as that happened, you can see how disappointed she is. But as soon as that happened, she became predictable. And that's what gave it to Imura. She was able to launch her attack, attack after attack, wave after wave. And that's what's taken her to the World Championship title. Brilliant performance from her. Well, Anna Bashta was virtually unbeatable this season, but it, it was built on the confidence of winning. And then all of a sudden, when she's having to come from behind like that, it, it just disappeared on her. Yeah. Yeah. Got a feel for her, but she's got a world silver medal and it's been a phenomenal season she comes out at the end of the season as world number one she gets a nice little uh, check from the FIE for that and uh, she doesn't have to be too disappointed with the world championship silver medal and I bet you she is going to be back next season and she is still going to be one to beat but standing on top of the podium will be this Japanese athlete history made here in Cairo yeah great job from Imura Misaki so um Let's bring in Richard Cruz because we're going to go straight to the men's uh, foil competition. I, I got a, qu a quick question, Rich, before I uh, let you uh, talk a uh, wax lyrical brilliantly about foil. Go on, Bash. What's the change like for you going from piste to the box? Well, of course, it, the best job out there is being a sportsman, of being an athlete, because they're the ones that walk into this venue and they've got the chance. They know someone's going to walk out a world champion. That's the best job to have. But here, I think, is the second best job. In the commentary box <laughs> or, or, or in, the, in, the, in, the, in the box on the side of the piece? Well, I mean, both are good jobs. But ultimately, you're paid to watch the best athletes. Um, and with the best seat in the house. And, and, Absolutely. And we don't have the pressure of being a coach. Yes. <laughs> well, we saw Eric Clough with a stress ball. We don't have stress balls here. I think There's it's no worse for the coach balls. sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, At least exactly. the fencer can do something about I it. I think the closest you can be to being an athlete is being a coach. Um, but what we get to do, I guess, in the commentary box is be very close to the action, but without the stress. That's right. Being a coach, of course, you do get a lot of nerves. You get a lot of adrenaline. But ultimately, there's more demand on the nervous system for the athletes. They're, ones, they're the real superstars. Oh, yeah, obviously, and, obviously. And, Rich, you, you were saying also uh, to me the other day when we got that lovely afternoon out in the... Uh, Carnel Khalili Market, which oh, yes. had a lovely afternoon there. But you were saying to me about the concentration that you require, you you now require inside the box, inside the, the coaching box. It's a slightly different type of concentration. If you're watching the team match as a coach, as a fencer, you go on, you concentrate, you do your bout. It might take five minutes. Then you come off, you, you, you zone out, and then you have another two goes. But as a coach, you're concentrating all the way through for the whole hour of the team match because the fencers will turn to you if they want to know if uh, they should go for a video review or if you want to put some pressure on the referee for a bad call. Uh, so it's a different type of concentration. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the same here when you're watching these matches. You turn your head away for a second to check a stat and three hits have been scored in Sabre. Um, but um, I'm very jealous that you're sitting in the expert seat uh, as uh, we look at uh, Imura getting a hug from a world-class fencing photographer, Augusto Bitsi. High fives from them, but uh, I am very jealous that you're not getting to call the uh, men's foil. One thing that I've found that when I stopped competing is that when you go to major championships, you know, I went to five Olympic Games um, and I've since been to seven Olympic 